onto pecan pie. Harvest being generally in the fall, you usually see this on the table during Thanksgiving. But for me personally, I can have this pie year round. In this video, we're gonna show you how to make this southern classic pecan pie with this wonderful all butter crust and not too sweet filling. As you can see, it's all about the pecans. So we start out by making our crust. Now most southern cooks will use a blend of shortening and butter, including my grandmother and my great aunt Patty. I prefer to use an all butter crust for its flavor, its texture, and a wonderful sort of tender um, crumble that it, it'll provide. We start out by adding our flour to our food processor, and then we'll add a pinch of salt, and then our granulated sugar. And I like to pulse this a couple times prior to adding the butter. And here we're adding our cubed cold butter, always unsalted. And again, we're gonna give this a few pulses. And we're looking for the finished texture of the butter to be about the size of a unpopped kernel of corn. And in this case, we are ready to start adding our ice cold water. So the reason we use ice cold water is to uh, give the full dough a, a certain temperature so it doesn't have a chance to overmix and overincorporate, and it allows the butter to stay cold as well. Some cooks will even go as far as chilling all of their ingredients ahead of time. So we'll give that a couple quick pulses. We're just grabbing the dough and wanting to make sure that it's sort of coming together nicely by just a small pinch between the hands, the fingers, and that's when we know we've got just the right amount of water. So at this point, we're going to remove our dough. We're just going to have it fall out of the processor here. Again, just always being aware of overworking it, even at this point with your hand. So we're just going to form sort of a ball, and then with a little bit of plastic wrap, we're going to just press this dough in there. And at this point, we want to refrigerate it for a minimum of at least an hour. And if you're impatient like I am, and you needed this yesterday, you can throw it in the freezer for about 30 minutes until it's nice and firm. So at this point, we've had allowed our dough to chill properly. In rolling out a nice even crust, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dust a clean, dry surface with a little bit of dusting flour, just enough so that your dough can move around. And we're gonna try to do as the least amount of passes as possible over our dough, which is going to increase the tenderness of your dough and not allow it to be too tough. So starting in the center and just rolling out. And another handy tool in this technique is to always have an offset spatula. And that's going to allow the dough to sort of be released from underneath. And I often make a turn when I do the dough. And starting in the center and rolling towards you and pushing out. And you can do the same for the sides. Notice how I'm lifting the pin every time and starting in the middle. This is the other reason why it's important to use a really cold dough because otherwise your butter starts to come to room temperature and it's a lot harder to work with. A lot of people like to flour their rolling pin as well and that'll just allow the flour not to be clumped up on the actual dough. You can see how nice and even this dough is. At this point we're going to start to roll our dough just over our pin. We'll slide our pie tin in place. At this point, we're just literally putting a little overhang on the top of the pan and just unfurling it, literally. Now that we've laid our pie dough into our tin, you just want to make sure that you sort of gently pull up on the edge so that it's not so taut and you're not stretching the dough in order to get it into the pie tin. That would increase the risk of it shrinking while it's baking. We're going to just trim out some of the extra pie dough so now we're going to begin our sort of roll, and we're just rolling that dough under just to create a nice even edge in order to start our crimping. And I can feel our dough has still got a nice chilled temperature to it, which is great, because anytime we're handling it with our hands, we want to make sure that we're working fairly quickly, especially if we're working in a warm kitchen. Now that we've got our under tuck, we're getting ready to do our crimp. I like to just sort of dip my fingers into flour a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm just working my index finger and my thumb of one hand up against the rim 
of the inside of the pie dough, and I'm going to put the pressure from my thumb just to make an indentation there. And we'll just repeat this process all the way through a nice even spaced crimp. And again, you can always go back to your flour, and you can see how I'm just working that pattern all the way around. Nice even crimp. Now we have our fully crimped pie dough. And at this point, we're going to grab our fork, and we're going to start to dock or prick the base of the pie. That's going to allow a nice even baking process when we blind bake our crust. It's going to allow air and steam and everything else to uh, be released so we're not bubbling up and the crust isn't floating up. At this point, we're going to refrigerate our pie dough uh, for about an hour or 30 minutes in the freezer. This will ensure the crimping shape to be kept during the baking process. Meanwhile, we'll heat our oven to 425 degrees. So at this point, we're going to blind bake our crust. And the reason we do that is to ensure a fully baked crust at the bottom once we've added our filling. We're going to start that process by lining the inside of the chilled pie dough with a little bit of aluminum foil, and then weighting it down. The reason we weight it down is if we put it in the oven like this, you're going to create sort of a puff. There's air at the bottom of the crust, and it'll separate from the bottom of your pan. And we don't want that, obviously. So we're going to add some good old beans to the inside of the aluminum foil. A couple cups will work. At this point, it's ready for the oven. After 15 minutes, the dough is basically set. So you want to remove the pie weights and the foil, reduce the temperature to 375, and continue baking until the outer edge turns golden brown, about five or seven minutes. Remove the pie crust. Let the pie crust cool on a cooling rack while you start to make your filling. When you use whole eggs, it tends to, uh, pies can tend to sort of puff or crack and almost get an eggy sort of flavor. Uh, so in this recipe, I use whole egg yolks, set the filling a little bit more on a custard texture. We're going to add our vanilla extract to our egg yolks in a heat proof bowl and just sort of combine them just to get the vanilla nice and distributed. And at this point, we're going to start to add our ingredients to our pot to warm it in order to temper those ingredients into our egg yolks to make our filling. So we're going to start with adding our light brown sugar. Then we're going to add our light corn syrup. Our heavy cream. Here we have unsalted butter. And really we're just going to finish this off with a little bit of salt, kosher. And then we're just going to put this on a gentle heat, just enough to melt the butter. We're not trying to bring this mixture up to a boil. And you always want to use unsalted butter in baking and cooking in general so that you can be in full control of the amount of salt that you put into a, a formula or recipe. Here in this classic recipe, we're using uh, light corn syrup. In Louisiana, our, our light corn syrup, our corn syrup, is our uh, uh, cane syrup coming from cane juice, just a slow open kettle reduction of the natural cane juice to make a wonderful sort of molasses type of syrup. And we actually use that in one of our variations of this particular recipe. So now that our butter is fully incorporated, fully melted, we've cut it off the flame. And we're going to do something fancy called tempering. And what it is is it's just taking a hot liquid uh, and vigorously whisking our egg yolks in order to not cook our egg yolks as we're adding the hot liquid. And then just a nice steady slow stream is what we're going for. And the nice thing about it using egg yolks instead of whole eggs in this particular process is that we're not whipping a lot of air into our egg whites. So you're not going to get that sort of puffy finished filling, staying with a rich, dense custard that's quite nice with this particular recipe. As just a precautionary step, I like to strain my filling. And the reason, you never know if you do have a little fleck of uh, cooked egg or, or particles in there. And we're just going to take this mixture and we're going to pour it right through a strainer. It's as easy as that. At this point, it's time to fill our pie crust. We're going to start with a cup and a half of chopped pecans. I want to sort of distribute that evenly. The key to adding the filling to the pie crust once we add our pecans is to just add it in sort of a spiral motion so that you're not pooling in one area. But in order to ensure a nice even bed of pecans, 
So at this point, I'm going to transfer the pie crust and the filled pie to a baking sheet. It's just going to allow for ease of removing it from the oven once it is fully cooked and also prevents a messy cleanup. Always want to put this in the center rack. And we're going to bake this for 35 to 40 minutes just until it's set. So right at 35 to 40 minutes, so we're checking to see if our pie is done. The way we do that is we're going to bring it back to our cooling rack and make sure that when it's just nudged and that it doesn't jiggle. And you can see it springs back just a little firm in the center here. That's when we know we have our set pie. At this point, we're going to let it cool for an hour. You really got to fight the urge to allow this pie to set up properly. A good hour or so, we're at 59 minutes now, and I can't wait any longer. So I'm going to cut into this pie. And as you can see, it's all about the pecans. But now's the time to make sure that this Southern Classic is living up to its name. That's the one. And this crust is unique, being all butter. You can still see how flaky it is without using shortening. Mm. That's good stuff.